have a look around the Cubase channel, you'll find a few videos that feature the lower zone. In this video, I want to feature the controller lanes in the lower zone. I've got a very simple MIDI idea. It's four channels triggering Hellion 6. And if I double click on the first, you can see how easy it is to get the key editor in the lower zone and start editing those MIDI events. But it's also super easy to start using the controller display to get greater control over things like velocity. I'm using my pencil tool. Now I'm going to switch down to main volume and the velocity will stay the same. It's just that the main volume is in view now. Once again, I can use my pencil to draw in changes or I can use the line tool to draw nice, straight, clean lines. The controller display isn't just there for standard things like volume, pan, sustain, and so on. We can use it to control things like dynamics and articulations, even instrument parameters. I'm going over to the Auto CC tab in Hallian 6 to find out what channel I need to transmit on to control various parameters inside of the channel or the instrument itself. I'm going to start with the cutoff parameter. Now, some of the control channels may not always be visible, so go to the setup and then make sure you can find the CC and the number there and you can remove it or you can add it. So you can define what you see every time you click on that drop down menu. Now CC74 is there, so I just need to go down and find it. There we go. And now I can drag the controller lane up and just zoom in and out and I can start to add cutoff controls, which is pretty neat and very easy. It could be quite tedious doing this for a whole entire project, so thankfully you can go back to your arrow tool and just draw a box around the first two, hold down Alt or Option with your left hand and just simply pick up on it and drag it across to the right hand side. So you can copy and paste controller data. You can even copy and paste in between different channels if you need to, which is quite handy. What I really like about this controller display is it's really neat. So I can have multiple tracks or channels down here in the lower zone and be controlling parameters of the instrument. And of course, there's always going to be a debate about resolution with MIDI. So it very much depends on what parameters you're actually editing. And of course, I could do this out in the main project window. But I think the really nice thing about doing it down here in the controller display is it's only visible when I double click on the actual event that I want to edit. And that means as soon as I move on to something else, all of that data is no longer visible. So it's not taking up valuable screen space on my computer, which is especially important if you've got a laptop. Now this is cool. Look at the way I'm using the handle to just drop down the front end of that box that I've drawn. And now I can just copy and paste that data over. I'm not paying too much attention to getting this correct, by the way, in terms of where I'm placing the lines. But for demonstration purposes, you get the idea. Now watch this. I highlight everything and I use that top left handle just to drop it down so it's incremental. This is an insanely amazing way to be able to edit parameters because you can edit with expression. So you can change everything in a relative manner. You can flip it round. You can have crescendos, decrescendos, filter sweeps. You can compress everything. You've also got the ability to move each of these points in proximity with each other. So that's a really neat way of being able to actually edit instrument parameters. Each of these controller lanes can be resized. So the neat thing about that is you can expand one to work on it and then just drop it back down again and add a new track to continue to change these or affect these parameters of whatever instrument you're controlling. I'll do another video very soon on working with articulation, expression, and dynamics in the controller display. We're really only just scratching the surface here of what we can achieve. I'm sure you're starting to get the idea that the controller display is an effective way of being able to control and manipulate parameters inside of an instrument. And the neat thing is, once you're done, you just close the lower zone and it's gone. It's not taking up your screen space. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Please like the video if you've learned something and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. I'll catch you there.